In this module, Module 2, we're going to explore technology integration in transdisciplinary teaching. Technology uh, use, we're going to begin by exploring both in and out of school settings. And so for instruction, when we think about in typical K-12 settings, the teacher is often privileged where the teacher stands in front of the classroom at a smart board or a screen and is in control of all of the technology. This is often referred to as instructional tech. It can also be used for assessment systems. So it might be a learning management system, it might be a grade book, those sorts of things. Technology can also be used to communicate back and forth. So we think about videos or flipped classrooms as well. It can encourage similar products or presentations. So when we think about PowerPoint templates, just like the one I'm using, it often helps to streamline, right, to make things look the same. But when we think about how, how students often use technology out of school, they really like to use it for creation or production. They love to do movie making and podcasting and creating flyers and pictures. The student in this setting is privileged. It's also a way to get feedback with social media when you think about posting on Instagram after they've created these movies or these um, pictures with certain filters and things. They're looking to get feedback from social media. And it's also a way to explore diverse ways of thinking, of making, playing, tinkering. I'm often amazed by the things that youth can come up with, with new technology all of the time. And so in this module, we're going to explore ways that we can blend those, these two things. So how can we both use it for instruction and for communication, which is critically important, but also give the students some time to really be creative and produce with technology. When we think about technology for education, this is really different than technology for learning. And we're really hoping that through STEAM education, students get more opportunity with seeing how technology can help them learn. One of the ways that technology can really help you in your STEAM classroom is to tap into interest-based learning. So you can find out what your students are interested in, what knowledge they already have, and how they learn and prefer to, um, to contribute. So you can do this through creating a, some surveys or some Google Forms. Also, using technology to assist you in understanding and developing those student in interests. So using technology really can um, create a new interest for students. You can also consider how technology can connect them with experts and mentors and peers. It's a wonderful way to have, to have um, experts or mentors Skype in, right, to chat with their peers or to do an online chat in a safe environment with an expert in the field. One model really looks at uh, what we call connected learning. Connected learning is a powerful tool to think about how we can engage the ways in which students uh, learn in the world outside of schools and bring that into school settings. So when researchers investigated how do students use technology outside of classroom, they really found three guiding learning principles. This was that students use technology to investigate things they were interested in. They also used it as a way to collaborate with their peers related to this interest. So say for example, if they were curious about maybe making movies or doing a news story, they would find peers that knew how to do that and tap into those. Interestingly, even outside of school settings, students really enjoy working in ac academically vigorous, rigorous um, environments. So they are often researching topic, topics about environmental issues or political issues because that's what interests them. There are three design principles in connected learning as well that we can tap into. Some are easier than others in K-12 settings. For example, production center. So how do we get moving kids away from just using the technology for technology's sake, but really producing it, as we mentioned? Um, maybe it's them creating their own news story by using movie making. Maybe it's that they're doing some interviews um, with the voice memos and they're creating um, a story based on that. So moving them really into that production. And how do they um, really think about this shared purpose? Often groups can be combined when they're interested in something together. The last one is thinking about that it's openly networked. Now out of schools, this is really easy. Kids can post things on the internet and share it with 
um, others. In schools, it can be a little trickier, but there's still opportunities to share things in a safe way. So how can you find out what your students are interested in? Just ask them. So one great thing is to survey them or their parents. If you have really young students, Google Forms is a great way to do that. You can invite them to share their creations or interests. So you can think about how children used to do um, uh, the opportunities to bring things in and share out. You can stay in touch with trends that include technology. One really great way is to read the Horizon port, report. We're going to read one of those th during this class. And then interact with them via educational social media. This platform often allows students to share things that they're interested in in an untraditional way than they're usually used to in school settings. One really important point is that teachers cannot leave the technology integration up to their students. So students' use of technology, which we're all aware of that they use a lot of technology outside of classrooms, does not mean that they're proficient in ethical and responsible computing. You really need to mod model this for them. And even opportunities for them to earn certain badges or skills as they demonstrate this ethical and responsible computing. Additionally, teachers cannot leave the expertise solely up to their students. Teachers must participate in the same educational networks. So you really need to understand how the tools work. Take time to look at those educational networks. You know, looking on YouTube if you're exploring a new tool is a great way to learn. This doesn't mean that you can't rely on experts in your classroom, but you should have a very solid foundation before teaching a tool. Teachers, like students, must continually participate with new digital tools and changes in, in the existing tools. And I understand this is really tricky to stay up to date, but it is important because students do burn out of technologies and it's important to see what new um, tools are out there. 